Hello and welcome to Wolfman Gaming. This is my Spider-Man Miles Morales blind playthrough. And in the last episode we really struggled to get in. <laughs> the future of science is today. And this might be one of the very last main missions. Like real scientists. And it took so long to get in. So I did something that I haven't done up until this point during this playthrough and that was to quit more or less mid-mission because I don't wanna I've had a few 40 inside. minute episodes and they're hard to record and I'm guessing they feel quite long to watch so I took I made an executive decision to trim or cut it in half but now we are looking for our good friend Finn, also known as the Tinkerer. And I'm guessing we are gonna follow this big yellow triangle. Cutscene country. <laughs> While we're still young. I'm coming, I'm coming. Hey, where'd they put us? Explore the science museum or research museum. Special exhibit on the top floor. Can't wait to see our names on the little sign, like real scientists. Today, Oscorp Science Center. Tomorrow, every major museum in the world. Hell yes. Dream big. <laughs> this model combines the design of a submarine with the deep sea integrity of an unmanned underwater vehicle. Oscorp's prototype would unlock new possibilities in humanity's ability to explore. You and I gotta get one of these. Okay. Bet we build one out of a vacuum cleaner and some old tires if we put our minds to it. Yeah, go completely MacGyver style. Down here in this little walk down memory lane. It's quite an interesting change of pace. In a game that is super intense, high octane action sequences, non stop swinging around the city, saving people, taking selfies, all that good stuff. <laughs> and then we suddenly throw in one of these moments. And I'm sorry, I am actually not going to rush through this. This is the first time I, I experienced this game too. And I'm not going as thorough as I would if I were to just play the game myself. But it's fun to look around for a little bit at least. These get, These things look like they were owned by... What the hell were they called? You know, with Silver Surfer Lady. Almost called him Silver Chair, but that was. <laughs> uh, Silver Chair was a grunge band that were famous for like two weeks or something <laughs> in the late 90s. I remember they had a song called Anthem for the Year 2000 with Maggie Kirkpatrick, I think her name is. More commonly known as Joan the Freak Ferguson in um, the old TV show Prisoner Cell Block H. An old Australian TV show do about... Uh, the special exhibit? Oh, yes, uh, we do. Our project is on display. Didn't think we needed tickets. You do. And we're sold out. Can't let you go upstairs. Thanks anyway. So we need another way in. She said there's no more tickets. Right, but see that door? The hallway behind it wraps around to the elevator. Can't just break in. We have to. Yes, we can. <laughs> tomorrow, and then we'll never see it. Yeah, Prisoner was a TV show about the life and crimes of a bunch of women in Wentworth Detention Center in Australia. 
great drama series. <laughs> I have seen most of it. I have not seen every single episode because it aired in 692 episodes, which is just an insane number. Find tools to open a door. But at this point, I am not super far behind because I think this is... If I don't miscalculate, this is... Uh, sorry, that is me pressing the wrong button. Uh, I'm guessing there should be a marker. The solar energy one with the stickers. I, uh, yes. What I was gonna say, I think this may be video 440 or just round, just about that I upload to YouTube. Still 250 <laughs> videos crazy. Think it's a meta material? Uh, behind Don't let anyone see. Prisoner Cell Block H, but we'll get there. One day. Uh. Got it. Let's go. Oh, man. Sorry. All good. Hey, Dr. Octopus. Is that Pete? Either way, uh, find something shiny to trick the light sensor. Something shiny. Should we interact with Doctor Otto Octavius? I couldn't do this without you. We should probably head back to the lab. We've overstayed our lunch break. Oh, Doc, I'm so sorry, but I've got to take the right. afternoon off. The solar energy uh, is like something we can use. Peter, is something bigger going on? Solar panel thingamabob. I feel I... <laughs> ah. Oh, hey, look. Solar mirrors. Yes. Sticky on the back. Perfect for tricking a light-sensitive lock. Okay, now we have all, hopefully all the tools we I've need because lock. this is not going too well. So. something else no not quite we gotta try again I'm not quite in a spot where it'll shine at the lock oh that worked we did it <laughs> there we go Doing stuff like this with you. What are you talking <laughs> about? Uh, hello. You'll be at Brooklyn Visions next week. I won't. I'm not gonna vanish off the planet. We'll still hang no. out. No. You'll be busy. Not that busy. I'm gonna make time for us. Seriously. Okay. Ugh, this is getting mushy. Come on. Let's head up. Yes. Yes, it is. But as I said, I. Uh, I got the Platinum in Blasphemous, and I also started playing the new expansion called The Wounds of Eventide. And I played it yesterday, and I took down one of the bosses. And Blasphemous has some great boss designs, great boss fights, but this boss, I was a little bit underwhelmed, a little bit disappointed. Because it is a giant snake boss called the uh, Sierpes. 
I'm not. I may have butchered that name completely. Explore the special exhibit. But he reminds me a little bit of the Great Serpent in the Sekiro games. He's probably around the same size, or he, she, it. Overgrown handbag. But this boss was extremely tanky. It is by far the absolute tankiest boss I have faced off in in that entire game. S but I have higher hopes for the rest of it. It seems like I did some research yesterday as well. It seems I have to also uh, start a new s game save to be able to take on all the new content and also need to ascend my uh, save file because there was a dlc release called stir of dawn that you can only access in new game plus where the game becomes harder because that is something they felt they needed <laughs> because as i mentioned before blasphemous is a very challenging game and i'm not looking forward to making it even harder than it already is but that is how you become a better gamer i guess how you evolve your skills when it comes to this amazing pastime called playing video games <laughs> Quick on your feet. Finn, you need to know. I'm done listening to you. Ah, <sighs> club cosplayer again. I had to tell her what happened to the reactor. Looking for the time that what? Probably something about uh, back in the good old days. We all love to glorify the good old days. But that is something I talked about uh, with a friend recently. Like, was it better before? Because people love to talk about the good old days. I know I have. And I think I have may have talked about this subject on my channel before okay it's on fat boy do good old venom crush always softens up even the oh biggest brute but were things better in the past or back in were the old days so good I would say maybe in a sense some things were better some things weren't a lot of things weren't <laughs> because it's easy to get nostalgic and when you think back on things you never remember the bad things because this is something I know I mentioned before I grew up in a really small town and got into heavy metal, death metal music. And there weren't really any stores. Oh, what? There wasn't really any place I could go to buy music or band t-shirts and stuff like that. So you had to improvise. We had an electronic store called expert that sold a few records and shit mainly they sold like tv stereos like an electronics retailer but also they sold some records as well and you could order records at the store and that was always interesting to do because <laughs> First, you always got that skeptical look when you told them, yeah, I want to order a record with this band that is called like Dime. 
yeah, dying fetus, cryptopsy, whatever. He always got like a judgmental look. <laughs> and uh, the way it worked was you asked and they said they would order it in. It would be in in like a week. Fuck this game. No. Uh, it would be in in like a week. Everything would be great. And I would come back there the week after. And more often than not, the album that I had tried to order hadn't come in yet. So I would usually, whenever I ordered a record from them, I would ask them to like, could you please call me, leave my phone number, just call me when the record comes in, and uh, I'll come in and pick it up. And they were like, yeah, we'll do that. And it was can't remember which record it was but that I tried to order and it never came in I went up there week after week still hadn't come in and in the end after like a few weeks because this shit could happen it could they could say seven days it could take three months you were used to that shit especially with <laughs> when you had an acquired taste and uh, suddenly one day like six months later soon after I had given up actually I was up there just browsing through records trying to get lucky and I found it like among like recent or uh, recent additions, or whatever you, the word is. And uh, I asked them, like, what the fuck, dude? I ordered this record. Why? When did it come in? Yeah, it came in like two weeks ago. And I was like, well, why didn't you call me? I gave you my number. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, uh, I don't know. And also, like, mail order services. Nowadays, you just pick up your computer. You can send an order to the other side of the world. Oh, dear God, what is that? Okay, it's just cosplayer dude. Do like so. And send his ass packing into unconsciousness. Yeah, nowadays, you can order... Just bring up your computer or your phone even. You can be sitting at your break time at work. Just whip out your phone. Go into eBay, Amazon, whatever your favorite procurer of whatever is. And order it from the other side of the world. And I think that is amazing how far technology has come how much easier and accessible everything is like trying to explain to a young person today the limitations of when I was growing up back in the 80s and 90s uh, it's impossible because just over the last 10 or 12 years uh, science when it comes to phones computers internet everything has just gone at lightning speed because when did the first iPhone come out in like 2009 or something maybe even sooner maybe like 2007 and that is only 13 years ago and now we're up to like iPhone 13 or something. I have an iPhone 7 because I always stay <laughs> a bunch of models behind. Because I think they're I think they're great phones. I love Apple products. But they're way too fucking expensive. Yankee, talk to me. How's the evacuation going? Are you 
you safe? My mom? We made it. There was about a dozen people. But, but... You're breaking up. Where are you? Yankee? All right. I'm on my way. Hang tight, man. Please. Yeah, well, he's gonna hang tight for a little bit longer because uh, I am actually gonna end this episode right here. We're just past 20 minutes, so it is a perfect time to wrap up. So I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in my next video. So until next time, this is the Wolfman signing off.